the lady and gentlemen, my name is Martin Herdina and I'm still Wicked It CEO with my clicker. So um, over the next 50 minutes or so, um, I tried to put some light on uh, the mysterious AR cloud. So um, if you have read the tech media over the last couple of weeks and months a bit closer, you might have read a ton of stuff about the AR cloud. Some like mundane statements like uh, AR cloud will be bigger than search, uh, the AR cloud will be the single most important software infrastructure in computing. So everything pretty crazy. Um, making one step back, for uh, those of you who don't know Wikitude, we enable AR. So we are around for almost like 10 years now. Uh, currently more than 120,000 developers, uh, more than 25,000 apps actually being powered by us. And we talk a lot to our customers. We listen a lot to their requirements and their feedback. And we haven't heard, hey, we need the AR cloud. So um, this means, so I had to make one step back, kind of go on a little mission, figure out where is this AR cloud coming from. Um, first thing I did, I checked out Google Trends. And it seems like AR cloud, there is no Google trend out there. So it seems there is some great term that's going to revolutionize our lives, as it seems. But still, it's no public trend yet. So what should be like the next source for me to kind of dig around, figure out what the AR cloud is all about and where it comes from. So I thought Crunchbase could be a good source because uh, traditionally VCs should kind of invest in new trends, in upcoming trends. And um, I got lucky there. So just like in uh, the first quarter of this year, more than $50 million have been spent on startups who try or who pretend or who plan to build the AR cloud. And I think that's a lot. Uh, and something that actually puzzled me quite a bit, or like uh, impressed me quite a bit, that's the first time now that uh, the large tier one VCs are investing in AR, particularly in the AR cloud. Suddenly we see Google Ventures, Kleiner Perkins, Index Ventures invest in AR. This hadn't happened over, over the last 10 years a lot. And that's, uh, to me, a very clear indicator that AR cloud has to be something quite big, right? So the next thing I did, I checked out Glassdoor. So um, are, pe are people looking for the AR cloud, right? Uh, are there jobs out there for the AR cloud? And that's the next thing that was very surprising to me. So just like in the Silicon Valley right now, there are 184 open positions for people to work on the AR cloud. And it's not like some kind of P uh, companies you wouldn't know. It's, uh, of course, there are those startups I mentioned earlier. They are there as well. But there are guys like Samsung, Niantic, Adobe, Mapbox. So there are huge companies. They all seem to invest quite a bit in the AR cloud. So it seems like AR cloud is going to be something big. But still, I couldn't find an answer to the question, where is AR cloud coming from? And um, I got lucky in the classify section, finally. Um, so AR cloud. So uh, the AR cloud wasn't there before. September 12, 2017. So the two persons inventing the term AR cloud was Ori Inbar and Matt Miesnix. So they invented the term AR cloud. And um, they did a great job in kind of taking some kind of ingredients for the future of AR, for uh, the next generation of AR, and kind of calling them all AR cloud as a key umbrella for that. So if you ask me, what are the ingredients um, one of those needs. So that's like still kind of Ori's kind of uh, definition of the AR cloud. So it's a localization service, so localization that works indoor and outdoor, globally, based on visual information, so no longer GPS, but visual information. It's high precision. It's about sharing AR experiences in real time. And it's about across devices. So there are quite a few kind of terms that really describe the future of uh, our industry. And um, looking backward, in a way, Pokemon Go was like the blueprint, the role model of the AR cloud. Of course, it's not visual information. It's not high precision. There are quite a few problems that have not been solved. But from a concept standpoint, um, Pokemon Go has been the role model for the AR cloud. It's a global service. It's outdoors. It's fully social and it's persistent. So these are like four ingredients that kind of put AR uh, to the next level and kind of give the whole thing a totally new perspective. 
So um, if you ask me, like before somebody invented the term AR cloud, uh, what are the kind of ingredients for the, like, the next generation of AR? So one is a precise visual localization and a fully go in line with Orient Met here. That's key, really being able to position a person, position a device in our environment. And this could be like in an enterprise environment as well as like in a kind of B2C or gaming environment. Second aspect is kind of being able to store experience persistently. So AR goes now beyond just kind of making uh, a video play on top of a magazine. So it has to be something persistent. Um, it ha if it's persistent, uh, it has to be enabled for collaboration. So AR is no longer a single user. AR is, per definition, a multi-user kind of technology. And that's the huge potential of like AR as next generation. And last but not least, it's key when I talk about uh, collaboration, you need to be able to sync and share content. And this could be between users, but this could all be in like machines or kind of uh, other devices. So to me, these are the four ingredients of kind of the next generation of augmented reality. And that's kind of what Ori called the AR cloud. Still, as I said, like, to me, AR cloud is an invented term by Ori and, uh, and, and Matt, which is great. Still, there are a few things I see different to them. And that's what I, what I kind of called um, the kind of key myth in terms of the AR cloud. So before that, still, as I said, like, um, there are tons of use cases for the AR cloud and, uh, or like for the next generation of AR. And uh, I could elaborate tons of all of those use cases, how strongly I believe in those. But as I said, um, I see a few myths. I see there are a few things I disagree with Ori. First one being his statement that uh, the incredible reach of Pokemon Go was a fluke, an outlier, and one of a kind. That's something I see differently. Um, first of all, I do believe Niantic knows their business quite well. And, and I, I trust in them being able to launch a second Pokemon Go. If it's like uh, Harry Potter or like some other brand, they know what they do, so I'm sure they can replicate the success of Pokemon Go. Second, it doesn't have to be like one global phenomenon. So we already see like huge successes on a local level, like local sweepstakes, local kind of location-based gaming. They all have like a tremendous success. And uh, last but not least, something we know qu quite well about, in 2013, uh, Fox Entertainment built a game called Scratch Nuts Hunt. So, well, they used like a strong brand, they used like the same technology, um, they used like the same gaming concept, and at the end, like 1% of the whole population of the Netherlands was kind of running around and, and uh, collecting golden nuts. So it's like uh, Pokemon Go, but like five years earlier. Second myth I see is like uh, when Ori claims the AR Cloud is such a mega project that perhaps only three companies, like he claims out Apple, Google, Microsoft, in the world have deep enough pockets and sufficiently big ambitions to tackle this. And um, that's also one point I see differently. So first of all, it's about mapping companies. So per definition, AR Cloud is a mapping technology. So, so therefore, I see guys like here, I see guys like Mapbox bringing huge competency to the table to build either the AR, AR cloud or like components of the AR cloud. So we must not forget those guys. Um, uh, the company or claim were all kind of American companies. Uh, imagine kind of building an AR cloud based on like WeChat, based on QQ, right? So to me, that's like a huge potential. There's such a user base, people are so social, communication is so strong. To me, that's like uh, a great basis for something like the AR cloud. Um, when Ori says uh, Microsoft is a big player there, uh, which is great, but still like the AR cloud per definition is like a crowdsourced type technology. So therefore, the more it's being used, the more accurate things get. So um, does Microsoft have the user base to have like a crowdsourced uh, AR cloud at this point? Or would it make sense for them like, to partner with a Samsung, for instance, put the technology in Samsung devices who have the reach like that? Just like making weird, wild theories here. Um, and last but not least, uh, when we talk about like, all those players, I see one player who has technology, who has experience, who has track record, user base, location database to play a big role in the AR cloud. And that's Niantic. So it's no claim there, but they have proven that to be right. 
and they know exactly how to replicate that. I'm not sure if they move in the enterprise space at some point, but at least calling the AR cloud is a kind of global service. They have a very good ingredients to kind of make this possible. Myth number three is like when Ori claims the AR cloud will serve as a soft copy, um, soft 3D copy of the world. And that's another thing I see a bit uh, different. I don't see the world being who needs to have like a centralized AR cloud. So is an AR cloud, a centralized service, um, the right tool to solve local business problems? Isn't that a bit of an overkill? Is, um, do I really want to kind of, when I play some kind of uh, collaborative AR gaming uh, in my living room, do I want to kind of upload that to a global, remotely controlled AR cloud? Even further, when I think about, about enterprises, so when I'm an enterprise, I want to use kind of collaboration services in my meeting room. I want to use kind of collaborative aspects uh, in, my, in my factory, in my manufacturing facility. Do I really want to kind of upload those data uh, to a Google, Apple, Microsoft cloud? Isn't it something that I want to kind of uh, have a very close uh, control over? So um, that's why I'm very skeptical about a kind of global AR cloud. I'm sure there will be a global AR cloud to some extent, uh, but I also see a huge importance of things like micro cloud or, or like local representation of an AR cloud. So, and um, that's why uh, if Ori can and Matt can invent the uh, AR cloud, I can invent the micro AR cloud, right? So, and you're cordially invited to the baby shower of the micro AR cloud. So uh, what is the micro AR cloud to me? Um, first of all, uh, micro AR cloud needs to, need to have like tailored AR cloud configurations specific to actual needs and requirements. So there isn't a one fits all. So there are so many use cases, so many kind of applications. Therefore, we need to have like very specific configurations of AR clouds for respective use cases. Secondly, highly important, uh, micro AR cloud should have privately managed and controlled data. So um, I mentioned it earlier. So as an enterprise, I want to control my data. I don't want to want to send those up to Google Cloud, make them make them kind of accessible for third parties for monetization. Um, yeah. So we all know European GDPR aspect. We all know Facebook. So data protection is one huge driver for um, my lovely micro AR cloud. Um, and last but not least, a micro AR cloud should be optimized for high security, should be optimized for high availability, and should be optimized for high scalability. And um, based on that, uh, I'm, I'm endlessly grateful for uh, Ori and Matt to kind of uh, come up with the AR cloud as a def definition of uh, the future of AR. Uh, I'm super excited about uh, how the future of AR will look like by having like localization, by having persistence, by having collaboration, by having shared data. And um, as mentioned, I'm super excited how the future of AR uh, will look like uh, for us here. I should have mentioned that that Slido is up for the questions. I didn't mention that, but still, uh, if you have questions, I'm sure we can kind of uh, uh, just shout them out, and, and I'm happy to kind of uh, answer them to you. Thank you very much. Oh. In your opinion, which companies lead the efforts to make AR a consumer reality right now? Um, good question. Um, First of all, I believe when, when you talk about AR, the future of AR, uh, I see utmost a huge importance in the enterprise space that I, that's I really see uh, as, as a uh, faster adoption than in the consumer space. Uh, when I talk about the uh, consumer space, I do see gaming, entertainment being very strong. I see like, uh, like uh, uh, there is so much content out there along like, like movie studios, along like kind of cinemas. I think that's a strong, a strong aspect for consumer AR. I see uh, museums, uh, educations as very strong aspects for kind of consumer AR. 
Um, and, and, and again, these are all aspects where things are very one-dimensional right now, and, and there's a huge potential to kind of bring them to the next level by making them collaboratively and multi-user able. Is my company working on this? Um, I, I, yeah, I would say, like, yes, we have micro AR clouds is like one of the feature. As I wouldn't call it. We, we, the working title was, hey, we can like store, load, and save maps. This was our working title. Now we have it, our micro AR clouds, yes. Wikidot SDK 8 uh, supports a bunch of those features. We don't see that to be like the revolution of AR. To us, it's more like an evolution. And uh, yeah, it's like the next generation uh, sitting on a, on a basis we already have been working on for quite a while. Um, p -p 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 Another four questions in two minutes 50. Um, is 5G required for the micro AR cloud to be successful? What are the blockers? Um, I think 5G isn't required, but it definitely helps things. So uh, 5G uh, is characterized by very low latency. 5G is characterized by bringing lots of the kind of technology near to the customer, near to the base station. And, um, and of course, when you talk about kind of uh, real-time AR, talk about synchronization, then of course, latency is, is relevant and is key. And therefore, 5G definitely helps the faster adoption of the AR cloud. I don't think, I don't think it's uh, necessary, but it's definitely a strong ingredient. Can the AR cloud be agnostic of providers and technology? Yes, I think it has to be that way, because, uh, because we're, uh, we're in a world when, where we don't only have iPhones or Android phones. Even like, with the, like Android phones uh, might have different OEMs with different kind of uh, uh, characteristics and, and paradigms and kind of preferences. So I do believe that. Look at Pokemon Go. There was no Samsung, Microsoft, Apple involved. This was purely independent. And that's why I do believe uh, the AR cloud is like a very kind of abstract layer uh, sitting on top of like form factor operating system or device. Largest technolo technological barriers from this coming to fruition. Um, of course, there are a few kind of computer vision problems that have to be solved. So it's not that easy to kind of uh, merge kind of point clouds between operating systems, between, de between devices. Um, there were, of course, kind of form factor aspects. So, so think about kind of devices constantly kind of mapping, synchronizing, exchanging data. So, of course, this is quite some kind of power intense. This is quite some uh, kind of computation intense, and this requires quite some kind of battery drainage. So uh, that's why that's why I do think um, is like a technical challenge. And of course, when you think about the AR cloud as a global phenomenon, then of course you need to deal with huge amount of data. So there are like endless data out there, and uh, you need to kind of constantly sync them, uh, constantly kind of manage them, figure out, uh, load and store the right set of data. So to me, that's uh, apart from the AR problem, the whole data problem, uh, that's an even bigger one uh, that has to be solved. Okay, another 10 seconds. One word, the benefit of AR Cloud is just awesome. So, okay. <laughs> uh, so. Enjoy the show and thank you very much.